Okay guys, so today I'm going to share with you how to edit um, just like a simple photo like this that doesn't have any models, it's just plain uh, still life. So I already have all my images imported and flagged. I usually, for first pass, I just like to hit uh, P for to flag them and then filter by flagged. If I want to whittle down more to like the my top faves, um, Usually I'll select them all and I'll press N to view them in this gallery mode and then I'll just collapse all the toggles here. Again, it's because I am working off of a 13 inch laptop. So you wanna collapse all of these modules as much as you can so that you can use more of your screen space. Um, I like all of them, they're all so different. So I feel like I might be able to use like one for social, one for my blog and then one like 10 weeks from now. So um, I'm just gonna edit all three of these. And so just to give you guys, so now I'm going to develop. I always start with a preset. I never just go ahead and, you know, start toggling all of these things here. Um, I always start with a preset and then I edit off of the preset. So these are all the presets that I have uh, saved and they're just from various clients or um, presets that I've downloaded. It's just quite extensive really, but what I usually use for this, let's see, I think I have one that is for product. So I'm just gonna do a product clean white and I'm just gonna hit that and see what it does. So I think that's very, it's very cool. It's not exactly what I'm going for because some of these presets are, are three years old. So this particular preset was one of my first presets I ever developed um, for products. So all the blacks are super black. If you go to the clippings here, I mean, you can see it's just like, super underexposed um so i'm actually and now like three years later my editing style has shifted so i always adjust the always um go into the settings here and adjust after um just because i've never like hit a preset and be like done i'm always going to come here and just adjust so let's see i'm going to bring the shadows back up just so i can see more detail this is still reading really dark to me so i'm going to bring up the exposure one thing I love about this preset is that it takes out any yellow or blue in it. So it just gives it this really clean white effect. So, I mean, my preset is called product clean white and that's exactly what it does. So um, I'm just gonna go down here and check if there's anything like sharpening that I would take out. Um, I like doing enable profile corrections just because it you see, like before, there's like a vignette, 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 uh, vignette, and if I do enable profile connection correction, then it will just kind of take that away. Because one thing I hate is also vignettes. Um, and then, yeah, I don't really touch any of this stuff, so I think I would just bump it up just a smidge, and then I'm happy with that. So I love how the green is also reading too. By the way, it looks really pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to select all of these and hit Command Shift S to sync all the images. And boom, that looks so good. I mean, honestly. And then and then I would just check each individual image. So like this, for example, I might bump up the clarity just because um, I don't like using clarity that much because I feel like it gives it kind of like this weird like hyper actually I guess I'm not mad at that um but it, it looks almost fake it looks too kind of like contrasty for my taste um although in this case I'm not super mad at it but I was still I think my my editing has gone a lot more subtle than it used to I think when I first started photography I, I like just did like 100% clarity on everything. And then now it's just like, less is more. So usually what I do is that I would sync one photo, check the photo and see if there's any other adjustments I need to make and then move on to the next one. And so for this one's a little bit tricky because I am getting part of the wall here. So I think what I need to do is crop and adjust this like so. My computer is really slow right now because I'm exporting another video for you guys, so just bear with me. Okay, that's so cute. And then I would bump up the clarity for this one just to have more of that contrast look and then bump up the exposure. 
And that's usually what I would do in Lightroom. I don't do anything else. I don't really do like touch any of these guys here because like this is a spot healing kind of situation. And usually what I would do is take it into Photoshop and edit it out that way. Cause I don't know. I just feel like I have more control in Photoshop. Although I'm not mad at that. Maybe we'll just keep that. Okay. Let's see, but like for something like this, I don't know if Lightroom can handle that. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, okay, so I'm gonna hit H and just change the clone source. Well, I guess it did a pretty good job. Um. I usually don't do that. I think I just did it for the sake of showing you guys, but I usually would just do it in Photoshop because it's easier for me. So this is actually pretty good. I think I would just um, bring it up a little bit. It's very cloudy when I today when I shot this photo, so it's just looking so dark. And even though this photo is of magazine cutouts, I'm still looking at like their skin and her skin is reading very magenta so i'm going to go over here and just hit the down button to bring back some of that color um one thing i have to say about making these adjustments is that if i'm making minor adjustments i'll use the up and down keyboard um button i won't take this and drag I'll do it if I know exactly how much value I want to add to it and it's just like faster. If if I want to add more to it and it's faster, then it's faster to drag. But if I want to do like what I just did with the skin tone and I want to just take it down just one notch, I'll bring I'll use the um, keyboard shortcut just because it's it's more it's there's a numerical value to it. So like if I go down, then it's like negative five. If we go up, it's plus five. So so that's just more accurate than if I were to drag it because then I, it, it would be hard for me to drag exactly like five, you know. Um, I'm just going to command Z to undo that. Okay, so from here, um, I think that is pretty good for my work in Lightroom. I usually just use Lightroom to color tone and make adjustments. Now, and I always look at it like this because then you can compare each image. And now this image is looking like, extremely dark. And just ignore that noise in the background because I'm at my office right now. There are people out there. Okay, so I'm just going to make this a smidge brighter. So one thing I will use sometimes if I'm in the mood, and if it's not really a serious photo, then I'll take this brush tool. Oops. Give me a sec. Okay, so I'll use this brush tool here to brighten the photo. But that's only if it's not a serious photo. Like I'm only posting this for Instagram for my personal use, but for a client, I don't I wouldn't ever do that. I would do that in Photoshop. I'm just gonna go ahead go ahead and export. Um usually for I'll put it into a subfolder on my desktop. I'm just gonna name this IG mood board so usually i keep the original file names because for example if a client says oh like can you re-edit like this file name 1160 to a more blue tone then i can reference the original photo so i'll never like rename it um and then for i'll just export to 300 and then short edge 8.5. This is my default export setting just because you don't know if your client's going to use it for print or web. And if you export for print, then they can always resize for web on their own. Um, but you don't want to have to like re-export it later on when they ask for print. It's just like annoying. So quality 100 and then I would just hit export. And that's it. So thank you guys for watching and be sure to subscribe and stay tuned.